on both those stories out of London. Well, on to Israeli politics now, and sources within the ruling Likud party have reportedly said there is no chance that Bitzalel Smotrich will be appointed justice minister after the right-wing lawmaker stated he would like to see Israel governed by religious law. He made his plans clear on Monday, saying he wants the role of justice minister so his union of religious right parties can help the country go back to the days of King David because religious law is far superior to the current legal system. System. Now, in response, Benjamin Netanyahu pushed back on Twitter, stressing that the state of Israel will not be a halakha state, that's a state of Jewish religious law. Now, that justice minister post was left open after the prime minister fired Ayelet Shaked from her cabinet position on Sunday as part of a shake-up ahead of the next elections in September. Well, for the latest in the political arena in Israel, we're now joined in studio by Jeremy Sultan, the Director of English Operations for the New Right Party. Jeremy, welcome to the studio. The last time we spoke, votes were being counted after the April elections and the New Right Party didn't make the threshold. Did you ever imagine there'd be a second chance so soon? Well, first of all, of course, I want to offer my condolences to President Rivlin and the Rivlin family on the passing of the First Lady Nahama. I remember sitting with you, and yes, it is crazy. I did not imagine any scenario in which we would be back here having another election within the same year. Yet, that's where we are, and we have to go ahead and go forward and have another election. And to that exact point, give us a sense of how you see things unfolding for the new right party, specifically in terms of Ayala Chaked, who is no longer the Justice Minister. Well, Naftali Bennett spoke uh, two days ago. He announced that the party will run in the upcoming elections. Ayelet Shaked did not yet say what it is that she wants to do. Uh, we heard, of course, her uh, comments at uh, the Justice Ministry. Uh, her outgoing comments were that she wishes the uh, next Justice Minister a lot of luck. If you ask me, I would like to see her as the next Justice Minister. And hopefully she will uh, decide to run again with the party and that hopefully together we will be able to make sure that we get her back in the Justice Ministry for the next election. To that point about running for the new right party, which as you say is not confirmed at the stage, I want to put you on the spot and say, should she be number one in terms of the leadership? I think that's a decision between Aftali and Ayelet. I think the two of them need to make that decision together. I think uh, that both of them have a lot of uh, advantages and they both have a lot of pluses. And I think it would look a little bit different with each one of them uh, at the top of the list. It's no secret that Naftali has been the leader uh, since uh, before in the old party, as I like to call it in Bayat UD from 2012. And uh, it would be interesting to see something else. However, again, that's something the two of them need to decide on. Would you imagine that she's more of an electoral asset at such in terms of a different outcome for the party because it didn't exactly work last time? Well, of course, you cannot disagree with election results. And again, it's not every time that you get a new chance here. This is the first time actually Israel is going to repeat election within the same year. So obviously, you have to go ahead and check all the different things at your um, uh every avenue that could go ahead and bring the most votes for the party. I think in the end, what matters more is who's gonna get which ministry. And I think the question of who's number one or who is number two on the party is not something that matters too much. You mentioned before, uh, Bitzel Smotrich, who's looking for the senior portfolio uh, from the Bayat UD party, he's number two on that list. So again, uh, I think you could perhaps make some sort of arrangement in which one of them is number one on the list, one of them gets a senior portfolio. But at this point, this is all speculation. As you said, you're putting me on the spot, so you get what you pay for. And again, I'm going to continue putting on the spot because I'd like sure. to know what you think the party could do differently so that there is a better outcome for the new right party. Well, I think uh, what we should see, and I do think this is what we will see going into the next election, is the new right branding itself as a right that speaks about what it is to be more statesmanlike, a right that talks about what it is to have more of an inclusive Judaism, a right that talks about unity, a right that goes ahead and looks at leaders who have true value systems and ones who are not going ahead to fight with everybody, but to actually bring something new to the Israeli discourse. In your opinion, what would have prevented Ayelet Shaked from joining the Likud party when so many thought that she would? 
Well, uh, Likud did start in the Likud party, and uh, she left, and she followed Naftali Bennett into the Bayit UD party. Uh, I've worked with her uh, alongside her, watching her meteoric uh, rise uh, for the last seven years. I think that she feels a lot of loyalty towards Naftali as the person who really helped launch her political career. Let's remember also that Naftali gave um, Ayelet Shaked the Justice Ministry, which was the senior portfolio between the two major portfolios that were given to the Bayit UD in the previous election, back when they were in the old party. So I think when she's looking at Likud, she's also looking at the value of loyalty. And as someone who knows Ayelet, I know that's something that speaks very much to her. And I think that that is a very big stumbling block uh, for her looking at the Likud. And very briefly, the reports that came through that, in fact, it was Sarah Netanyahu who didn't want Ayelet Shaked joining Likud. What do you make of that? I, uh, I try not to speak about other people's uh, spouses. Uh, I read the reports, as I'm sure a majority of people did. If that is true, uh, that's, that's a very big disappointment. I would like to believe that the prime minister makes his own decisions and does not delegate them to his wife. So I will choose to believe that instead. Jeremy Sultan, we appreciate your time. The Director of English Operations for the New Right Party. Thank you so much for being in studio.